Hello, and happy Straturday, friends. Cyberry here with another Darkest Dungeon How to Use Guide. Uh, quickly, before I begin today, thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this guide with a friend. Um, mild apologies here, uh, this is coming a little late. This is not actually Saturday when it's releasing now. Um, I've, I've had a uh, rather rough end of the last week, and just been very busy through this weekend so far, but today I am recording this. It should go up, I'm hoping, um, only a few days late. Uh, but it's better late than never, and uh, I apologize. Anyway, let's just get down to it. Uh, today we're going to take a deep dive into how to play The Choir Hunter. The Choir Hunter was released June 2nd, 2021. It was last updated June 16th, 2021, so not that long ago. Um, the canon name is Priscilla Whitlock. Let's breeze through the credits real quick before we dive into the stats. Um, Moon Kanan uh, did the concept, art, animation, writing, and design. And Retail did the design, scripting, and did the trailer. And Shay did the sound effects for this class. So taking a look at the base stats, where we usually begin, um, you're going to find a very interesting class. Got, got a couple of custom uh, progressions to look at when we get to them, and a couple of um, high-end things and some, some average things as well. Uh, we're going to start with the HP. Uh, starts out at 19 for the Choir Hunter at Resolve level 1. At Resolve 5, this grows to a 35 HP. Um, so this is it's going to go up by 4 each level, and it starts out at 19. This is what I would consider below average. Um, this is the same progression you see from an Occultist or a Jester. It's very comparable to those. So you're going to find she's a little squishy, uh, but she doesn't have a ton of reasons to be actually concerned about that. We'll get into that here soon. The dodge, then this is one of those reasons, uh, starts off at 15 at resolve level 1, and it will move all the way to a 35 at resolve level 5. Um, this is top tier. The only other class I'm aware of currently that has this kind of dodge um, is the Jester. The Jester has this exact progression. I believe, um, as far as end game level, maybe the Duelist has a dodge that's on par with this. Um, but early game, this is one of the highest dodges you can find, and it stays with that pace as it levels up. Uh, the Prot, we shouldn't really be concerned with this. It's 0% as expected. Uh, we're going to go straight to the speed here. The speed starts out at a 9, at resolve level 1. And at resolve level 3, this will become a 10. And at resolve level 5, it becomes an 11. Um, this is off the chart. Uh, the fastest before this that I have seen is uh, a maximum of speed 10. And that's the Grave Robber. Um, so this is actually just, just above that, but it's very comparable still to a Grave Robber because the Choir Hunter is going to go very, very first just as much, if not more, than the Grave Robber does. Uh, the next in order here is Accuracy Mod. It's a zero, as you'd expect. Um, no pros, no cons. Crit for the Choir Hunter is a 3% at Resolve Level 1, and it progresses all the way to a 7% at Resolve Level 5. Um, this is what I consider to be average crit. Uh, this, is, um, this growth is exactly comparable to a Crusader, but you're going to find she's still going to get enough crits. Like, her main attacks, this one will not have a lot of crit, being an AoE, uh, but you're going to see a decent amount of crits from Augur of Ibriatus, which I hope I'm not butchering. Sorry. Bloodborne, I, I know nothing about, but I love it anyway. <laughs> Um, and this has a normal crit growth. So you're going to find she's going to be okay at crit fishing. She even has a trinket or two to do so. But um, it's not necessarily uh, where she shines. She is a very good support class. And finally, we get to the damage. Uh, the damage is, is all custom progression. It's very comparable to uh, a couple classes. But it's going to start off at 3 to 5 at resolve level 1. And it'll progress to a 6 to 9 at uh, Resolve level 5. It's very close to Antiquarian progression as far as damage is concerned, and uh, 
thus kind of close to the actual damage that a flagellant does as well. Uh, but it is custom growth. There's no exact match um, in the regular uh, Darkest Dungeon classes. So real quick, we will dive into her combat skills. We're going to begin with Serrated Cane. Serrated Cane is usable from any rank, and it will target both rank 1 and 2 opponents of the opposite side. This attack will move her back one rank when she uses it. It's a melee attack with an accuracy base of 90 and a damage modifier of negative 45%. This will inflict bleed with a 110% base, so it's actually a pretty potent bleed right from the get-go. Um, and the bleed is two points around for three rounds. This will also buff herself for two speed, and I believe that buff lasts for three rounds. So this is a good way to um, set bleed. Uh, this is one of the few ways that she has a lot of synergy with the powder keg. Uh, she could set a bleed and then he can get, you know, bonus damage from spear thrust against a bleeding enemy. Um, but this is, this is just a good way to AoE the front, maybe set a bleed on where the usually the tankiest creatures are, and um, it's not a bad way to, for her to move back in the party as well. Her second ability is Augur of Ibriatus, and it's usable from rank 1, 2, or 3, and it can target rank 1 or 2 enemies. This will also move her back one rank when she uses it. This is a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of negative 20%, and a crit mod of plus 4%. Um, this will stun the target with 100% base, and it will have an additional plus 10% stun skill chance if afflicted. And this will set horror on herself. The horror will be plus one stress around for three rounds. This will debuff herself for minus two speed uh, for the next couple of rounds. So she's got, you can start to see it take shape here. She's got some um, self buff speed, self debuff speed, and it's like a, it's like a pace altering um, thing and a lot of her abilities have these self buffs for speed and uh, and debuffs as well so it's kind of an interesting way she kind of like diversifies her turn order a little bit and uh, it's kind of an interesting way to play with her third ability here is visceral attack um, this is usable from rank 2, 3, or 4 and can target rank 1, 2, or 3 enemies this will move her forward when she uses it. It's a melee attack with an accuracy base of 100, a crit mod of negative 3%. This will clear stun on the target, and it will inflict bleed versus stun targets for 100% base. And that bleed is one point around for three rounds. Uh, here's the kicker here. It's going to do a bonus 300% damage against stunned enemies. So this is exactly like a visceral from Bloodborne. This will also give her a plus two speed buff. So it's a good way to combo into things and guarantee that your next turn is going to come up pretty quick. Um, so if you've got stun setters, um, she's going to kind of love that. Um, the only issue we have here synergy-wise is you need to plan ahead because she doesn't necessarily want to be in the front ranks. Um, so if you got stun setters and you're going to use Visceral Attack on her, just be careful to... Uh, be cautious of what rank she's going to be in when she's done with that round, uh, because this will move her forward, which is kind of not where she wants to be, but she'll do okay almost anywhere on the field, temporarily. The fourth ability is a Call Beyond. It is usable only from rank 4, and it will cleave through every rank of the enemy party. This has an accuracy base of 90, a crit modifier of negative 6% on each target there, and it will do a bonus 25% damage if she is afflicted. The original use of this ability, um, this is kind of an interesting one, but the we'll go through it one chunk at a time. The default version is going to prepare the skill, and it's going to immobilize herself until she attacks. Uh, what the immobilize means is she is unable to be moved from rank 4, um, and she is just gonna stand there waiting uh, in a different idle frame animation that's custom to this class 
to complete this um, spell. And then when her next turn comes around, she's going to cast it again. It's going to do a bonus 100% damage versus size 2 enemies. Uh, it's going to move her forward all the way to the front. It's going to give her uh, horror stress gain of 2 per round for the next 3 rounds. And she will gain an additional action directly afterwards. This will debuff her speed by 7. So the way this works, um, she's going to use the ability first. Uh, for some reason, that use of the ability has a really low accuracy, but can actually hit still. So you could get lucky and do double the damage output for this attack. It's not like you're speeding anything up necessarily, because you still wait a turn in between these activations. Um, but you could get double the bonus out of this by getting a lucky hit. So try out using high accuracy on her and see if that actually... Um, helps you get that first proc more often. But what it does is it's going to hit everybody, uh, usually missing everyone with the first activation. It will immobilize herself. And then when her next turn comes, she is going to cleave everyone with the normal high accuracy, do bonus damage to big things, and just kind of uh, rip and tear through shit, move her to the front, where she will get an immediate second turn on that second round of combat. So um, this is not a bad way to cleave through things. If you've got a party that um, everyone else by themselves usually leaves three-ish targets alive, but you know half half dead, but gets one kill on round one, this is not a bad way to finish off from that, uh, because that round two, a call beyond actual activation, will probably kill most of those softened up targets. Um, but this is also uh, Plan accordingly. You can give you can give bonus rounds and get something good out of this. Like you can give an extra turn to her on turn one, and you can get both a call beyond turns done and get that bonus additional action all on round one. Um, and that actually, if you're just trading the additional skill, the, the uh, sorry, the additional turn allies turn for technically three turns from the choir hunter, um, this isn't a bad way to start a combat. I prefer going after, uh, you know, one-hit kills if you can visceral attack or setting up stuns with Augur, but this is still a good way to fight. Fifth ability is the Old Blood. It is usable from rank 3 or 4, and you select a target, which can be herself or an ally, and it will heal that target for 4 to 5 HP at opening resolve, and it will self-stress heal for minus 3 stress. Um, this actually grows pretty well. Uh, my top level one here is going to heal 8 to 9 if you have something like um, uh, Hippocratic on her, for instance. This will be massively buffed. And the self-stress for minus 6 is actually really, really good. Um, so this comes in pretty handy, and it's a really good one-target healing move for her because it's kind of getting two things accomplished at once. The sixth ability she has is Choir Bell. It is also usable from rank 3 or 4, and this will uh, be an AoE kind of heal slash buff for all her allies. This is going to heal the party for about 1 HP here at opening resolve. This eventually grows to a 3 to 4 HP, so it's uh, a little bit, like slightly behind where a Vestal's AoE healing will be but this also has different utility to it. Um, this is going to do a bonus 30% healing if afflicted, and uh, this is going to inflict horror on herself for three stress around for three rounds, um, and all heroes are going to cure, blight, or bleed, and her allies are going to be stressed out for six when she does this. So at the cost of a little bit of sanity, um, she is going to be able to effectively heal and remove Blight and Bleed from uh, everybody. This is going to heal, get everybody off death's door if that's a problem, and remove Blight and Bleed from the whole party um, at the cost of your friends are going to be a little stressed out. So if you're running with um, a good stress healer, uh, she is going to have a lot of synergy going on there, and all you're doing is taking a half step backward as far as their stress level uh, whenever you have to use Choir Bell. 
and I can't forget here real quick, briefly, before I move on, that uh, this also has the debuff self from minus two speed. Uh, I almost forgot that. Anyway, the seventh ability is Phantasm Shell. It is usable from rank two, three, or four. It will inflict horror on herself for three stress per round for three rounds. You will select a target, which is any ally or I believe herself, um, and this will buff their damage by 30% for the next, I think, three rounds, probably, if I had to guess, um, and plus 6% crit. This will debuff herself minus two speed. This is a really good uh, ally buff. Like, um, for instance, Emboldening Vapors is gonna... Emboldening Vapors is huge, like it, and it got debuffed, yes, but um, this high-level Emboldening Vapors doing 15% damage buff um, is pretty good still, but here we got a 30%er. Uh, this is a great way to turn one of your party members into just a massacre machine and just start ripping through things. So um, if, if this is worth your uh, turn one, you'd get a lot of return on investment there, especially if that class is uh, like a guard repost unit or an AoE attacker. I want to try this one day with a shield breaker, but I've just been having too much fun um, throwing her in with a party of a couple randoms and the powder keg. It's just been uh, a delight. So let's breeze through her camping skills real quick. She's got the uh, the normal encourage, wound care, and pep talk. And the first of her unique camping skills here is blood vial. This one should look familiar. This is the same blood vial um, ability that the powder keg has as well. And it is a time cost three camping skill. And she will target herself and heal herself 40% HP. So they're very good for self-sufficient HP healing, even while camping. Um, and usually a lot of the difference here is wound care has to be a companion. Uh, but both the powder keg and the choir hunter here are just self-sufficient in that way. The second camping skill is Make Contact. Make Contact is a time cost for camping skill. She will heal herself 20 stress, but if she's afflicted, she will heal herself for 60 stress. Um, this is very themed to um, Bloodborne, and it's basically spot on, and I actually love the ability here being uh, different, vastly different, if you are afflicted. Uh, it harkens to like insight and having different impact on how the game works. Um, so it's very it's very cool. I love this the camping skill. I frequently use this one, actually, if I've got enough time cost for it, that is. The third camping skill is the Healing Church. This time cost three. You select a companion, and they will heal 15% HP, remove any diseases, and remove bleeding. Um, this is... I frequently like to run around with a grave robber or a plague doctor in my party because I hate leaving a dungeon where a random disease happened and still having that disease on. Um, so you're going to find the choir hunter is going to have that much synergy as well if you run into, uh, let's say you're in the Warrens and you just get a really shitty disease and you'd rather not spend money in your off time. Just make sure you can do this while camping and it won't be a detriment to your survivability with everybody, uh, but the Healing Church can be very useful for that, and it's also a ally heal ability. It's to the point where there's not really a need to have wound care on her. If you think you might have to use wound care, just equip Healing Church and pay that extra time cost. And her final unique camping skill is Great Deep Sea Rune. It's time cost two, and you're going to select a companion and you're going to give them a series of buffs until the next time you camp. Um, you're going to get a plus 20% bleed resistance, blight resistance, stun resistance, and debuff resistance until the next time you camp. So it's a good way to uh, protect somebody from like getting all of these terrible procs. Uh, the stun resistance is very interesting. There's not a lot of ways I've noticed... Um, buffs that do that for an ally in this game. I think the most common way to buff your stret your stun resistance, excuse me, um, has been trinkets until now, but the, you can kind of combine that with this now if you wanted to. Um, 
This has interesting tech that I want to try out with Senua, whose ability stuns literally everyone else on the battlefield. Um, so, interestingly, you could set up with this when you get into the dungeon, give one person who has that lowest stun resistance um, this buff, and and hope that that's going to keep most of your party unstunned when Senua does her crazy shit. Uh, but honestly, this has a lot of unique synergy that I want to try out, um, but it's kind of niche. So this is probably, I'd say, generically the least powerful of her camping skills, but still has um, a lot of potential in my mind. Okay, uh, briefly, let's go over some other stuff here. Um, her crit effect is interesting. Um, her crit effect is going to stress heal six on herself and give her a buff to receive less stress uh, for the next three turns. But let's talk about that custom affliction. When she hits 100 stress, she is going to be insightful 100% of the time. And insightful is a custom affliction uh, that is going to give her some buffs and some debuffs. Uh, the buffs are going to be minus 35% stress received. That's almost half stress received, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just one good trinket and that, and all of a sudden if she's afflicted, all stress damage and uh, horror damage to herself is just going to basically be cut in half. Um, so that is very useful to know, and it's going to, similar to how I made my buried, it's going to increase her survivability because you're guaranteed to get that affliction. What else is it going to do? It's going to buff her accuracy by 10, so she's going to become more accurate. This has interesting synergy with an empowered move when you're afflicted, by the way. It has interesting synergy with a call beyond because that first turn you use it, it has a chance to cleave everybody for that damage, so you have a chance to do twice the damage. Um, and it's interesting because that accuracy buff that you're getting uh, just for being afflicted is going to make it more likely that that happens. Um, but, it, but it also has a couple other custom buffs. The buff for um, Augur of Ibriatis also. We already mentioned A Call Beyond, and it will have a buff for more healing with Choir Bell. Uh, as far as the debuffs with her custom affliction go, um, she will also... Her HP will go down by 15%. Um, she's already pretty um, pretty frail in that way, so this actually gets a little worrisome. And it's also going to reduce her dodge by 15, which uh, <laughs> is a lot to lose just from being afflicted. So if you do want to carry her in the party and you kind of want to be afflicted, maybe bring a guard unit just in case um, so that she's not eating a bunch of attacks when she can afford to being that she's lower on HP. Um, this will have a massive bleed resistance debuff of 50% when she's afflicted, and all the other resistances here are going to go down by 15%. Um, so you're going to see it's a little useful uh, because it's going to empower your moves, but you also you don't necessarily want to be afflicted, but you're not going to be afraid of it either. Insightful isn't that bad. Um, but anyway... Let's see, briefly, the synergy notes before we get into, like, trinkets and whatnot. Um, Powder Keg works really well with her, um, and they are meant to play together through Serrated Cane and the Spear Thrust attack, or setting up a stun and one of them using Visceral. Um, they are just made to be together, and they work well together. Uh, otherwise, she works well with powerful stunning allies. Um, I'm going to take her out with the Plague Doctor and try and make use of that double stun. Um, she's probably not going to get as much of a benefit from that as the Powder Keg will because of speed, but um, she's also just, if someone's stunned when her turn comes, she's going to wreck them. Just keep that in mind. Um, otherwise, let's see, she also allies pretty well with any other unit that wants to attack bleeding units. If you've got a Trinket, they'll do bonus damage to bleeding enemies, um, put that on her allies, she'll probably really enjoy that. Um, otherwise, you know, she's just an all-arounder that is a very good support unit, has a lot of interesting tech at her disposal. 
briefly going over the quirks here. Um, what would I lock on her? Um, I'd like dodging quirks on her to take that, you know, off the chart good dodge to a even higher amount. Um, speed quirks, depending on how you want her to play around with your other party members, or I'd like to trinket for speed, but if, if Luminous lands on her, mark it, like, instantly. You like those things, both those things on her. Uh, what do I got marked on this one? I have Corbett's Eye and Corbett's Grace. Accuracy is a very good thing to lock in, if you look into that. Uh, I got Prismatic Eye and Corbett's Eye. I don't know if I'm going to keep them both, but uh, they're very fun, so maybe. Um, she doesn't necessarily want to specialize in either ranged or melee damage, but if you don't feel like you're going to use Serrated Cane a lot, and Visceral is strong enough for you, and you don't want to worry about it, then your lean might go to ranged at that point. Um, otherwise, Hippocratic is pretty good on her if you're going to use her as more than just a stand-in healer. Um, I like to use her as a backup healer because she, like all her abilities, are really good. So uh, I just hate removing some from her list just to put in both Choir Bell and Old Blood. Uh, but Old Blood I prefer uh, above the other one. They're both very good, though. Um, yeah, that's about it. So let's just... Uh, trinkets, I think, is all we got left. Uh, let's see if I can find her trinket sets. Is that them? No, oh, it's not that. It's not that. There we go. Boom. Alright, we're going to start with the Squirming Phantasm. It's going to buff her crit by 12%. Uh, in exchange, she's going to take 10% more stress from sources. Uh, so that includes horror, that includes um, generic stress damage from either uh, any source, honestly. Uh, allies can give her stress. It, it's all kinds of sources. So it's not a bad payoff. That 12% crit is going to be pretty massive. Um, especially if you're going to use like AoE attacks, that's going to proc pretty often because of just how many hits you're stringing together. Um, so if you really, really, really want her to crit fish, uh, especially if you're going to use AoE, this is a good way to do it. Is just put this sucker on and uh, put her with a stress healer in the party and everything will be fine. Uh, the next one we're going to go over here is the very rare umbilical cord. This is going to give her a plus 33% to her healing skills in exchange for a plus 66% horror duration, but minus 10% stress. Um, so the plus 66% horror duration. She kind of doesn't care about that um, because if she's not already afflicted, her horror durations are, are long enough, but they're but they're shallow. They're not going to be giant leaps toward insanity. She's dealing one or two or even three stress damage to herself around. Um, so having an extra two rounds to that is not gonna make or break your run. Uh, the healing skills here that's a, that's quite a benefit. But if you if you are afraid of horror duration in this case, there's all kinds of trinkets you can put on her um, to replace this. The next one we're going to go over here is Serrated Segments. This is the rare trinket. It's going to give a plus 66% bleed amount when she attacks in exchange for a minus 25% damage. Now her damage is pretty low as it is, um, and the sources, her attacks that do damage, that's not necessarily the primary point. This will weaken her AoE attack. Uh, a call beyond will be pretty nerfed by this. But um, if you're using just Augur or um, her Bladed Whip, this is probably not a bad way to do that. It's going to really empower how much bleed damage you do to them over time as well. Uh, the uncommon trinket here is Dried Phantasm. It's going to boost her stun skills by 20% in exchange for minus 10 to her dodge. Uh, this is not bad. If you don't mind her dodge going from uh, really, really good, like the Jester, to average, which is all this would do, this would bring her down to average dodge. Um, if you don't mind that, this is a good way to empower her stun skill. Um, most of the stun bonusing trinkets in this game are either kind of 
underpowered or they are class only. So the fact that she has her own here that's going to kind of even the odds in your favor, uh, it's quite a benefit. Not all classes have a bonus like this. The first of her common trinkets is Calming Incense. Uh, it's going to just add 7 to her accuracy. This is a uh, really good early game, and honestly, if accuracy is your primary concern, if you do see good results, uh, if you want to use Call from Beyond, for instance, and you see good results from this accuracy buffing, uh, this is not a bad way to do it as well. There are better trinkets in the game, uh, but this is a common trinket that you'll probably find pretty early upon adding the Choir Hunter to your Hamlet. And the final one that I have here is the Formless Adon Rune. Uh, this will add 3 to her speed. Uh, for a common trinket, this isn't bad. It doesn't have a negative. Um, that's pretty handy. But she kind of doesn't need a lot of speed, so this, this is highly situational. Um, I have other sources that are adding speed on mine because this one I'm going to take out really just loves to be quick as hell. Uh, but this would not be a bad option either, as far as a custom trinket. Not the best thing in the world. Um, the other ones she has, uh, I do not own in my Hamlet. They are the Crimson Court trinkets. Um, but, kindly enough, on the Steam page, the creators have, uh, have a list of these trinkets, and the Crimson Court one can be found there, and they're very good, especially together. So, let's just... We're going to take a take a run out now. We've got a team in. They're in the proper order. We're going to run to the cove. Well, you know, yeah. Yeah. We can probably still get some bleed occasionally. It's probably not a problem. Uh, we're going to run to the cove and just kind of run through here real quick. Show you how she operates in battle. Hopefully show off some of her moves. We'll see, though. These salt-soaked caverns are teeming with pelagic nightmares. They must now, be flushed out. In a normal party, I would not put um, my choir hunter so so close to the front. Uh, by default, this would not be my starting operations for any other normal party. But there's a lot of movement going on on my front three here, uh, so actually it will work out. She's going to end up staying between rank two and three through most of the fighting. Uh, my assumption, anyway. I'll let that light go down, damn it. Okay, we're gonna try and set up a stun to begin with. Um, and it's gonna be on you. As the fiend falls, oh, we're just gonna get quick kill. That's nice. Okay, well, I'm going to hit you with this stun. See if I can get a mix up. There's a stun. Now, let's go visceral. Hell to the yeah. 18 doesn't seem like a lot, but this guy has 40% prot, so that's actually really potent. Annihilated. Considering everyone else is doing about that damage to a zero prot enemy. Alright, well, that was done. Let's just, let's just whip for bleeding's sake, and getting four bleed for three turns, and buffing his bleed up. Hello, worth it in my book. Um, really, let's get rid of that corpse. I don't think I'll get a stun. Yeah, his resistance was pretty buffed there. And there's that high dodge coming in handy. Okay, end this fight. He's bleeding, so he got the extra bonus damage from Spear Thrust as well. So you can already see, if you can land a bleed, um, he is going to love it. If you can land a stun before either of their turns, it's gonna... It's basically like a freaking Christmas gift. Let's get rid of those for now. It's easier that way. Uh, here we go, battle number two. Okay. I've already used both of those. This rule's not gonna help me here. This rule looks, um, aside from the animation itself, just a little bit different with her, but it's mostly the same as the Powder Cakes Visceral. Let's get that stun. Let me stun these guys. Bingo. Alright. You hit him. Interesting. 
interesting. Well, I can get a kill, even with 50% prod, I think. Confidence surges as the enemy oh. crumbles. Now, the damage output between them with Visceral is going to be slightly less with the Choir Hunter than it would be with the Powder Keg. And with her natural speed buff compared to his, that's not terrible. Uh, but she can still take advantage of Visceral's and get good output out of it. I'm going to use the Old Blood, even though I don't need to, um, just to show off her healing ability and her stress heal. Um, it's very handy. And we're going to stun you because you've taken a turn. <laughs> Another Visceral. Yeah, why not? Eradicated. Oh, See, that's what it looks like with no prod. It's fucking mind-boggling. Now keep in mind, you would probably need a, a decent chunk of that damage if this were a, uh, a full-on level dungeon. Continue but I don't want to risk sword. people just for a guide video. So. Them oh. I knew I should have taken him out. I don't know why Seize I didn't. This momentum. Okay. Push on to the task's end. Let's put on some moves that I haven't shown off yet. Yeah? I'm gonna switch up the gameplay considerably here. Let's, let's move this around first. There we go. I hope this is gonna be okay. We'll see. We'll see. Oh no, I didn't get to click off. It just moved me a half step forward. Okay, first things first. Uh, I'm gonna use a call beyond and see if I can get a lucky hit with my accuracy buffs. There's one. Fuck yes. Okay. Seeing as it's AoE, I have no problem hitting him uh, because of that. We're gonna hit you to get a stun. Just to buy time for the other call beyond animations to happen, right? Uh, so we are actually gonna pass your... Yeah, pass your turn. And I've got some stress on my buried up here, so I'm actually gonna stress heal her. But you can see, when her turn comes, a call beyond is gonna be the only selectable thing for that one turn. Because it's a combo move. She's locked into the casting right now, and it's about to actually hit at the end. We got the kill. It would move her forward. It would give her an extra turn right now, but we are done with this fight. So it's a good way to have a really big round two by having a low accuracy round one AoE cleave thing. Um, we're gonna try and, oh, you know, the next battle's way, way over there. I'm not gonna make you guys wait for that. Well, anyway... Apologies, I couldn't show off all of the moves of the Choir Hunter, but um, she is a considerably helpful support ally, and uh, I encourage you to try the ones I didn't get to yourself, because these are very good abilities. Anyway, uh, try the Choir Hunter today. Um, give a shout out to Moon Kanan and Rhett for their hard work here, and Shay on the great sound effects. So drop them by the Steam page in the link below, um, spread the good love, and uh, play this mod today. Thanks for watching. Stay frosty.